Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Taxi Brotherhood Show. Tonight I will be your host, Johnny Holmes. Gotcha. Now, since the real Johnny Holmes won't stand up, we'll get straight to the show. Tonight we have from Mrs. Melissa's left. I'm Arnie Cast. I'm a cab driver Bye. for 30 years, and I am the secretary of Taxi Brotherhood. I'm Clifton Holliday. I've been a taxi driver for 20 years. And I'm Melissa Callahan, and I've been a taxi driver for two years, and I'm just an independent taxi driver, not affiliated with any specific group. And I am the unknown cab driver. <laughs> I've been a cab driver for 20 years. It feels like 200. And I'm proud to say <clears throat> tonight's show will be dedicated to an organization that has surpassed all organizations in the history of Chicago. The UTCC. This show is dedicated to them and their lives, their innuendos, and their false accusations. And we will start from the beginning and work our way to the end. Now, let me start off by saying, and these are the topics we will touch on. We will touch on the topic that the, um, I guess you call it surcharge, that they fought to get us. We're going to touch on the fact that they also fought to get us Steve Witterberg's law. And we're going to touch on the fact that um, they organized a most dynamic strike that as far as Mr. Cass knows, and saw all the five people left the staging area when they started their strike. That was monumental. So, <laughs> those are some of the subjects we're going to touch on. But while we at it, we're going to start with Mr. Cass. And Mr. Cass, can you please enlighten us to this great exodus that took place the Sunday at 2.05 that afternoon? It was a massive exodus. Uh, they had to clear the way. They had to get a lot of cabs <clears throat> to move out of the way because five cabs creates a major traffic jam when you're, when you're going out on strike. And it's a lot of people that go out on strike. I mean, you got five cab drivers out of maybe 10,000 that were working that day but it was a very successful strike. All of five cab drivers left the staging area at O'Hare Field. So my hat is off to UTCC. Congratulations on a job very well done. Well, now you fail to understand. The UTCC stated that 3,500 cab drivers went on strike. Now, O'Hare Field Midway, in every single hotel, had cabs galore. The reason why I know is I couldn't get no fans. Because <laughs> well, everybody had to, I had all the hotels blocked up. But before the strike started, the chairman of this organization, uh, Mr. Fayez Kadnizar, I'm not sure if, on the pronunciation of his last name. His quote was, this strike is going to paralyze the city. Uh, if this strike paralyzed the city, I didn't see no bodies laying out on the street. I didn't see no ambulances going anywhere. I don't see uh, what sort of an effect that this strike had as far as paralyzing the city. I mean, five cabs left the airport. That's a major, major emergency. M Mr. Cass, we will not tonight be such sarcastic 
statements about these fine, upstanding gentlemen just because <coughs> they can only count five caps and in quadrupled into 3,500. That proves that these are the people that Mr. Obama needs to get to fix the economy. Because if you can take $5 and turn it to 3,500, we'll be home free. But we're going to skip that a little bit. And we're going to go to a subject that is also near and dear to our heart that Mr. Um, actually, I forgot which one said it, but it was dealing with Wittenberg's Law. Now, for the record, anybody who knows Steve <laughs> would tell you, I do not like him. Make no secret of it. <laughs> but <laughs> I have to give him credit for Wittenberg's Law. And the reason why is he fought to get it. He dealt with Monique Davis. Springfield pushed the law through and made it a felony to attack a cab driver while at work. <clears throat> now, Mr. Holliday, since he knows my such close relationship to Mr. <laughs> Wiedeberg, <laughs> For me to admit that he did something and what I think about him, he would have to have did it. Am I right or wrong, sir? Well, Mr. Wiedersberg, I don't know why you're so hard on the poor fellow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> one thing about him, he did push that law through. Now, the thing I'm not sure about, does he belong to an organization known as UTCC? Anyone <laughs> know? Mr. Weaselberg here. Mr. I can I can guarantee you he don't. Uh, he don't belong to UTCC. Actually, he called sure? the, he called the UTCC. Uh, what's the word he used? United Taxi Driver Clown Coalition. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, at least good to know what he thinks of. But let's right. move on to another one, and Mr. Holiday can get to this. And then we're gonna get to uh, the young lady. Um. During the last hearings the council had dealing with the tax industry, we went down to ask for a surcharge because I was down there asking for it. I know Mr. Cass was there, I know Melissa was there, and I know Mr. Holiday was there because I saw everybody. Now, I also know <clears throat> that I saw about 30 drivers with yellow armbands on and presented at least a 30 minute, what do you call it? Presentation. No, Put not presentation. Power PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. In the council stating how they did not want a surcharge. They wanted a between a 16 to 21% raise. Now remember this well. Now, my question is to you learning people, because like I say, you, you, you see I'm, I'm, I'm hiding out of the way. So my question is simple. If you did not want the surcharge and you fought against it, if you didn't know anything about Williamsburg Law and you didn't help get it, and you do a strike at all the five cabs left O'Hare Field. Maybe you can answer this question, Melissa. How do you take credit for all this stuff? Oh, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's no answer to that question. There's no way that you can take credit for, for all of those things uh, without making yourself look like a complete fool. Okay. <clears throat> Let's switch to something else. Now, personally, I was told, and it was put in the paper, and uh, it was brought up on Craig Delamore's show um, on WBBM, that you and Mr. Cass, especially, got medallions 
from the city for doing such a great job of striking against the strike. Now, my only question is, uh, where they at? <laughs> Either one of y'all can answer. Take the time. Uh, well, as far as being told that we got medallions, I'm trying to see when I can get my medallion because, you know, the medallion represents a source of income if need be necessary, an additional source of income. But yet, I've been told uh, the check's in the mail, so to speak. Well, so, now, it was told to me. It might be here for a Christmas present. It was told to me, and I asked uh, Peter about this. I said, where's the medallion that Melissa and Arnie got? And since I work for the city, can I get my paycheck? So now, that's right, y'all get paychecks too. Y'all work for the city. Oh, is that right? That, I'm going by what was told. Well, And since you know, quote unquote, that these fine, upstanding gentlemen would not lie, you got a check coming. Well, I was listening to one of these radio programs where Mr. Fayez Kadnizar, the chairman of the UTCC, word for word said that everyone who participated in the counter demonstration against their strike, George LaFala, the publisher of the Dispatcher newspaper, he's working for the cab companies, he's also working for the city, and the rest of us got medallions. Now these are the words from the chairman of the UTCC organization. Now, if he knows so much, maybe perhaps with his influence, he can get us our medallions and we won't have to go through all of this. You don't need his influence. If he knows that you got a medallion, and again, being that I'm somewhat sarcastic, and knowing that I am a Muslim, and I don't believe in lying, and he is one, so I know he don't believe in lying. He would never lie. He's an honest man. That's right. He's an honest so man. So my question is, again, where are y'all medallions? The check's Melissa? in the mail. No, no, Melissa. She going to tell me. Go well, ahead. I'm waiting. I would love to have a medallion, but the truth of the matter is I do not have a medallion. I'm a lease driver, um, and Fayez Kozindar, the chairperson of the UTCC, has lied. Um, about not only myself but about several people having medallions and the way that they received medallions from the city as some sort of a payoff for opposition to the strike and um, this is it's really very unfortunate um, because this like you said this man is a religious man I see him he prays every day and um, in the, re uh, the the recreation area um, at O'Hare he prays he gets down on his knees and he bows his head to the ground and he prays to God. Um, and then he goes out and he lies. I looked up lie in the Webster's Dictionary and it says to make a false statement with the intent to deceive. That's what a lie is. So this holy man, the supposed holy man, religious man, is going out there trying to deceive <coughs> people, innocent drivers that trust him, that put their trust in him. This is what he's doing. Um, he's slandering my name, uh, other people's names, George LaFala's name. Um, and he's doing this to people that oppose his organization and opposed the strike. But the fact is, a lot of these people that he's slandering are good people that just simply want to help other cab drivers and disagree with their methods. Now, this is, this is I don't think that he quite understood when he decided to do this to go out and slander people that this is absolutely terrible for his organization because they have all of these posters and flyers all over the place all over O'Hare and Midway and it speaks of their high ethics and their principles and you know all of all of the wonderful things about their organization but then he gets on the radio and he just outright lies 
Do you think so, perhaps maybe we're living in a dream and none of this is, uh, is actually going on? Is this a dream perhaps? <laughs> of course not, he didn't lie. <clears throat> How could the man lie? He did not lie. He did not lie. He, he, he just me, misrepresented the excuse truth. Excuse me, gentlemen. Let's let's set the record straight. He didn't did not lie when it came to me. When it came to you, because I am totally disreputable. I do not have a good word to say about him. Let me ask you this. Do you think maybe perhaps instead of a lie, maybe he just distorted the truth a little bit? Is that what it could be perhaps, not no. a lie? See, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> but let's skip this part about distorting, what would we say, the truth a little bit? He just misrepresented the truth. <laughs> no, he misrepresented the truth about the same way your president I don't have to say no more, because he's still president. I don't want to get shot. <laughs> well, let's not go there. Let's leave that alone. Let's, not, let's just not go but there. But the bottom line is, all jokes aside, and this is an organization that they brought in, uh, I think his name is Partik, from, uh, from New York. I met him. We've had many conversations. And he was explaining to me how their organization was going to correct everything and make a united front. But then, like I said, and what we talked to Craig Delamore, they didn't ask anybody that they want to take part in the strike. They told us we were striking. I'm an independent operator. Mr. Holliday is an independent operator. Everybody on that stage right there that I'm looking at is an independent operator. How does someone come out of New York, backed by a faith-based organization, and tell you you're going to strike whether you like it or not? Now, here's the question, and I understand this part. Let's, let's lay this on the table. It was told to me, that the mosque felt that a lot of their people were being mistreated. And you won't get no argument out of me about that. So they got this faith-based organization who brought in party to galvanize and put the drivers together. But the problem that everybody did, and the same thing Partik said the other day when me and him was talking, oh, excuse me, Peter said it, not Partik, that we get all these different organizations together so we can do this and we can do that, and we meet and we discuss about this. If you do all of this, what is wrong with understanding the basic principle that we work off of, that we are, whether we man or woman, or we work off the philosophy that we are Chicago cab drivers. That's the license, Chicago cab drivers. Why do you want to separate people when we are supposed to be united under the same umbrella to fight for our beliefs and our rights? This is the question I put to you three. Anybody can answer first and go down the line or whatever well, way you want to do it. What I, what I would like to understand, and maybe I can get some sort of clarity, the words faith-based organization. I mean, what is, what is the concept of faith-based? Who are they catering? Are they catering to everybody? Are they catering to a select group of people? What is faith-based organization? I, don't, I, I do not understand that concept. I mean, I'm a cab driver for 30 years, and nobody ever told me, well, you have to join with us because this is what we're going to do. 
I've always been able to make my own decisions, and I don't need somebody coming out of New York City telling me what I'm going to do and what is right for me when this person from New York City has not, doesn't even have a chauffeur's license and doesn't know anything at all about the cab business in Chicago. So who is this person to say anything? Well, me personally, I'm trying to figure out, as Mr. Parti, you call him? Partik. 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 Mr. Partik out of New York. What does he have to gain from his affiliation with these people? There is something peculiar about him in the first place. Where, where did he come from and why is he here? Who paying him? Somebody must be paying him. You have to eat. You have to live some kind of way. So how is he accomplishing all these things out of New York and what, that 900 miles from home? <laughs> but he don't seem to be working for anybody except this organization. So why is he here? Can anybody answer that? You have an idea why he's here? Well, um, like Johnny had said, uh, the the CIOCG, uh, I don't know exactly what that stands for. It's a, it's a agency that uh, is with the mosque, the, the Muslim people. They saw that their people, being the Muslims, were being exploited. So they asked for an outside organization to come in um, and help create an organization for taxi drivers. Um, Pratik, from what I understand, is actually from Skokie, um, not, from, not from New York, but the, the actual organization, American Friends Service Committee, which he works for, they're, I believe, based in Philadelphia, somewhere in the East Coast. Um, so they do have offices all over the United States and work on different projects, but this is something that the CIOCG asked them to come in and do. Now, like Johnny had said, they, you know, they, they have come in and they've started dividing us, and that's absolutely true. Um, <coughs> um, I think that their intentions may have been good. They may have wanted to come in and actually help cab drivers, but the way, and I could be wrong, but I, I believe that their intentions were genuine, but the way that they went about it was so incredibly wrong. They came into this industry and I think right off the bat they met George Lutfala. He was very excited that there was an organization that had come in to help cab drivers. So he met with them and as soon as they saw a picture or, or I mean uh, rather an, an advertisement of different fleets in his newspaper, they painted him as this corrupt man um, that was in with the fleets and in with the city. And they went out and they started spreading those rumors. And I know that because they actually said that directly to me, that he's in with the fleets, um, that he's looking out for his own interest. Um, I know as a person that has tried to bring a lot of our problems to the media so that we can let the public know what's going on, um, that the media is not always there for us when we need them. They, they don't feel that our problems are real problems. So I believe that's one of the many reasons that George LaFala decided to start the newspaper, the Chicago Dispatcher, to help us expose the problems that we knew were going on, but couldn't get any media attention for. <coughs> well, um, while I agree with that, mainstream media as anti-cap cap drivers. I, I agree. They do not write anything the way you say it should be. You can write, you can t you can do an interview, then look at it a few hours later, and you said, oh, did I say that? You didn't really say it, but when they get through editing, they edit out exactly what you said to make it look like you said something that you did not say. Uh, Cliff. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me remind you about an incident, and I'm sure Johnny remembers, around eight or nine years ago, Steve Wietersberg and myself, I made a call to the Tribune and I told John Cass about our situation in the cab industry. He agreed to meet with us at the Rainbow. To make a long story short, these other news media people found out about it. I'm not going to say how they found out. But to make a long story short, Fran Spielman 
from the Sun-Times went to Cliff Holiday's car in the parking lot at the Rainbow Restaurant. This was when the situation was going on with one call a day. Cliff showed her how the Gandalf works and she seemed highly interested. When this article came out in the newspaper, there was no mention made about any of this with Cliff's cab, Cliff showing her how the Gandalf works. I called up Fran Spielman. I said, Fran, what happened? She says, oh, it was edited out. Well, I mean, if this is how the media works, what, you know, this is what we're up against, and this is why we're sitting here in this studio trying to reach the public so the public knows what is going on.